Good morning, everyone. My name is Ben Smith. I'm the Supervisor of Educational Technology at the Lincoln Intermediate Unit. I want to welcome you to back to our LIU Learn On webinar series. Uh, this morning, I'll be talking with um, our science experts, I believe, around the area as we consider how we get online science content resources uh, for everybody. Um, I'm a former physics teacher and K-12 science coordinator, so science is right up my alley uh, as we think about um, how uh, this will work um, as we move to online instruction. So this is our team who is producing all the Learn On content. It's been a, a total team effort for us to be able to bring uh, these resources to you. Uh, you can see my information is highlighted there, so if you have specific science questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and ask. A couple of things about our meetings. Um, in this case, uh, for you science folks, um, I have not disabled chat. It is actually open if you want to uh, populate uh, the chat with your uh, particular uh, area of science and your level of science. Uh, that would be uh, particularly helpful for me as we go through today. Uh, I've tried to pick uh, resources that span K-12 but we wanna make sure that, <clears throat> that we uh, hit any particular area. So um, the chat window is open, so you can use that. If you have specific questions, <clears throat> I would ask that you um, uh, please post them to the Q&A pod. So the chat is fine. If you wanna post <clears throat> information there, you can do so. And then um, the Q&A pod will be what we use for um, those, those particular questions. I'd also ask you to raise your hand if you'd like to use the microphone. And then finally, don't forget to leave, uh, don't forget to um, uh, stick around for the Act 48 link at the end. We'll share that with you guys uh, as well. Uh, I'm going to uh, populate the um, slide deck into the chat for you. And so you should be able to, to get to the uh, chat window there. Um, and I already see we have some seventh grade, tenth grade. So you can always send that information. If you send it to panelists, that's going to come directly to me. <clears throat> You're also welcome to send it out to everybody. All right. Uh, so a couple of things about the changing expectations for online learning. What we're trying to do is, is what we call continuity of education. And the, the idea is that free appropriate education extends to all. And so if a school provides educational services, to the general population, they need to ensure that they have um, information for everybody. And one of the things that we'll be talking about, all of these content sources are gonna be online and we need to think about how are we gonna get um, some of these types of sources to students that don't have online access. That'll be uh, also really important for us. So the webinar outcomes, uh, as, I, as I start to look um, here and I see people still uh, continuing to populate your topic areas, so I appreciate that. Again, that'll be really helpful. So if you're just joining us, uh, I, the chat is enabled and I'd ask you to, um, to put in your content area and grade level so that I have an idea of who we're looking at um, and we can focus in on that. But for the webinar outcomes, what I would, I would point out is that um, we're gonna go over a bunch of tools uh, or actually content sources. Last week, we focused on tools. So things like Flipgrid and Padlet and Zoom. We're not really gonna talk about those this week, um, at least for the content ones. We're actually gonna look at where can you get appropriate content for your grade levels, and in this particular case, in science. So my hope is that you're gonna leave knowing where to find um, online science content resources. And this is a little bit different because last week when we talked about things, we said, you know, a list of a thousand tools is not really helpful. Um, and, and the reason is that we want to try and keep it kind of short, uh, use uh, tools in a couple of different ways, but allow students to become familiar with them before we move on so that we're not trying to get kids to do so many different things on so many different sites. But this week, it's actually a little bit different. I actually find the long list of sources to be really helpful because if you're a high school chemistry teacher or you're a third grade teacher, you know, you, you have different needs. And so you're gonna to have to go through a list of resources to sort of find what you're looking for. And so um, I'm gonna jump over for just a moment and point out where you can get uh, some of these resources. 
So as I look at, um, as I look at the um, Learn On website, if I go under for educators and I just highlight there, you can go down to where it says online co content resources. And when you click on that, you'll see that we have the four core areas at the top and other areas um, down uh, below them. And when I click on science, there's a long list of sources that you can get content from. So that's the place that I would point you towards, um, most specifically for the online content pieces. So, but as I think about um, the long list and, and I show you where you can go get those things, um, you'll also notice that it says free during uh, the pandemic that is going on or always free. Um, and so you wanna consider that as you think about, uh, do I really wanna jump in and make use of this? Now, be because, because you're going to be um, teaching from uh, remote uh, home locations, you want to think about um, the fact that you're going to probably need some of these. So this is a great place to be able to experiment and find some of those content sources that you're probably always pulling together. Uh, but at the same time, we, we want to just think about, okay, am I going to be able to use this next year or when things return to, to, um, to normal? So I have a list of considerations for you to think about. I gave you sort of the one. Um, you do want to think about how you're working with your students um, and, and what, is, uh, what is going on with um, them and their devices and things like that. Are you working with them synchronously or asynchronously so that if you tell them you need to go access this resource, are they going to be able to get to it? Um, and it, of course, if you are using it, uh, with with a particular group, um, are they going to be able to access that at the the time that they need? Um, you will also think about accessibility for all students. Um, this goes towards um, <laughs> can can they get online? Uh, does it have closed captioning? Uh, is it going to be compatible with their browsers? Uh, all types of things that will lead to the accessibility discussion and thought process you go through. And you also want to think about whether or not you want your students to, um, uh, to uh, have access to um, the accounts that they may need in order to get students to work through, um, through all these pieces. So uh, are they going to need an account or are they going to be able to just go in? If they need an account that adds an extra layer. Uh, of complexity to them so that you might not be able to to actually get uh, that to work the way you want it to. And then you also want to think about what type of media am I looking for? Am I looking for a video, audio, text, interactives? Um, you know, so those types of things I think are going to make uh, a big difference for you as you as you work through um, uh, working with these types of media. So um, when we think about when we think about um, explaining tools, so I wanted to go back to the explaining tools real quick. These were some of those tools that we talked about that we may be able to use things like Zoom and Google Meet. And can you make use of those um, as a part of what you're doing here? Writing on the board, the same thing. Can you bring those tools in? And so. Um, uh, thinking about how closed captioning might work with especially the video piece and then we had talked about how you can use document cameras and so if you're looking for this type of information as to how you can integrate science content in with it go back and look at the face-to-face -to, -face to explaining to online tools webinar uh, and you can get that information so for now what we're going to do is we're going to jump in and take a look at um, some places that you can go to find um, resources and I'm going to start with OER Commons and OER Commons stands for Open Educational Resources and what's great about these resources is that they are always free so so when you go and you do a search if you're looking for materials this becomes a place that actually compiles lots of information so if I jump over to that tab this is where OER Commons is uh, you'll see it's oercommons.org and um, when you go to this, you can actually just start by typing right in here what you're looking for, pull your subject down. You can talk about life science or physical science. You can pick your grade level uh, that you may want, and then you can hit search. But I'm gonna actually show you something else here. And you'll notice, by the way, I'm not 
logged in, so the sign in button is there. But I'm going to go down to collections. <clears throat> and when I go down to collections, these are uh, pieces that have been collected together, curated uh, by OER Commons. And I would just remind you, you might want to look for NGSS because NGSS is going to provide you with um, the next generation science standards. And even though Pennsylvania hasn't necessarily adopted it, the NGSS is going to allow you to be able to find those types of resources. So if I just click into that, um, it's going to give you, again, 1,807 um, uh, uh, pieces, artifacts, if you will, uh, that you can do. And then you can go and further your search down. So you can type in uh, chemistry and do a search here, and then it'll start to narrow it down for you. So, so these types of resources, I think, will be really helpful as you think about um, going through and looking um, for standards, uh, standards-based instruction. So the NGSS um, is, is another one of those things that you may want to look for. And if you do Google searches and you type in NGSS and your topic, you're going to also find a lot of resources. So those are two ways to sort of search through and, and find the information that you might need. And I also wanted to take a few moments to talk about textbooks. So <clears throat> if you have a textbook, your students may have taken it home with them uh, if you had uh, enough time and foresight to get, that, get them to do that. But when you start thinking about working digitally, um, these are uh, three sources of textbooks that you can use. So that if you're looking for additional reading or you wanna give students an opportunity, I'm gonna start with the high school level. Uh, I see in the, in the chat, we have a lot of high school folks. Um, first of all, these textbooks are always free, 100% free. Um, you can see that this is their science collection. Uh, it's mostly um, aimed at high school uh, students. It comes out of Rice University. And I can tell you like here, the, the college physics uh, textbook um, is perfect for like a, a college prep type class. Uh, they have university, which might be in more of an honors physics class. Um, if you look under here, they also have AP course books. Um, and one of the nice things is these books get updated all the time. You can get them as a PDF. You can rearrange them if you want. You can sort of uh, make them the way that you want to make them. Um, and you can think about the, the things that they have. They also have uh, something called OpenStax Tutor, which allows students as they read to sort of guide them through the work. So if you're searching for an online textbook, that's a great choice uh, for your students. Now, that's for high school students. If I'm thinking about um, sort of the middle school area, and there are some, uh, uh, maybe a little bit lower level of high school student, um, I'm going to use CK12. So CK12 has some, some great resources um, in here for books. And again, you can choose by your subject. You can see it actually goes down into elementary. It even goes, I saw somebody says elementary and kindergarten has kindergarten science. So you can click in here and you can see the books um, that they have. The, um, uh, there is an ability to um, customize the book. So if I go back out here a second and I'm thinking, okay, well, I am teaching physics and, uh, but I'm not teaching all the materials and you can see all the topics that they have. So they have 20 chapters in here. Well, you can actually, you can actually take just the chapters you want. So it could be one or two or three chapters that you're going to work on. Um, and you can um, think about uh, how you're going to um, reorient it. And so one of the nice things about this, and I use this with my uh, lower level students um, and my college prep students, is I can take that book, sort through it, and say, these are the topics that I'm going to do. Because, you know, when you have a book, sometimes you don't do all the chapters. And so that's a nice way to do it. You also see they have a nice little webinar coming up here at three o'clock. Now notice it says PDT, so that's six o'clock to our time tonight. So um, if you're looking at that, uh, they do offer a lot of professional development for CK12. And then for the elementary students, um, this is a site that, that I think um, has some great resources for elementary science. Um, please note, it is it is not a free site. So you can you can get the learning going with free access during uh, the pandemic that's taking place. 
And so you can see like they have um, exploring science and they have little activities that students can do. And a lot of it is aimed at things that they could probably have at home um, uh, to be able to recognize that. And you get, go through and click on the table of contents or the MGSS. And you can see, again, this is aimed more at elementary as they have uh, K through five. So you know, when you're looking for those types of materials, um, those three sources, as I go back here, um, I think can be really helpful for you. The, 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 as you think about the sources, um, having access to those pieces um, are gonna be really helpful for you as you build your lessons up. Um, and, um, and, and making sure that you have access to the right material. So textbooks are one area. I also wanted to talk about labs and interactives, and we did a, a webinar on this last week as well. Uh, this links to the um, to the uh, archive of that on our YouTube channel of that particular one where we talked about FET and Explore Learning, pretty in depth. I also want to point out that each of these is linked. All the images are linked. So if I go back a page, these are linked as well. You can see as I roll over, I get the little finger there. I can click and go out to them. So I tried to make it easy for you to find them if you're like, okay, I know we talked about it. How do I get there? Um, so uh, FET is, um, is, is one of those uh, sites that you can go to. Um, I'll just, because we covered this in depth, um, I'm not going to go into a great deal of depth here, but I just wanted to point out that when you go here, they have a number of simulations, um, all areas of science, uh, especially. Saw a lot of chemistry teachers on here, so I'll, I'll go and take a look here. And I wanted to point out that you'll see if it says Java, like that little symbol, then that means that it might not work on an iOS device or an older or a more modern browser might not be able to work with, it. but anything that has the five on it for HTML5 will work in a modern browser. So you can go through, and then if you were to click on any one of these particular ones, you're going to see that if you click on the down arrow for teachers, that they have lessons that are in here. And so, so that's how you can use FET. A second, um, a second one that you can use is um, Explore Learning. And so when we think about Explore Learning, here you have to have an account and your students have to have an account. So if you're gonna use this, you can sign up for a free account during the pandemic. And um, when you go to find gizmos, you can find them here by academic standard. So this can be really helpful because when you click on that, you can then go and find Pennsylvania right here. And then when I click on that, it has all the standards, again, from third grade to 12th grade. So it works for some of the littles, but it works all the way up to high school. And you can see, like, if you have a, a specific subject, you can find that subject and you can go in and take a look at it. So if we jump into biology, again, thinking about where you are in your standards and what you might need to do, and you could use, like, the mouse genetics, um, and then you could go to that particular gizmo and launch it. And so, um, you know, this is, this is one of those cases where, you know, you can, uh, there we go. And if we put this guy here, right, and then um, we can uh, have them breed and then see what we get out of that, okay? And then you can rebreed. And then if we bring this guy up here, we can reset it and we can work through it. So, oops, clear it, right, bring this guy here and this guy there and breed them again. And so, so you can work through those types of simulations and it does make for um, some nice uh, tools for us. A couple other things, um, I put one in that is uh, on biology simulations, specifically there. Uh, so the biology simulations, uh, you can just see like the different simulations that they have here. So again, that's probably more towards um, high school, but it does have worksheets that you can uh, start to use and students will be able to use that without creating a login um, for themselves. Um, so I'm just closing out some of these uh, tabs for myself. Um, Science Journal for Kids and Teens. I mean, these are really articles, uh, but they, they also have an interactive quality there. And so, um, but they're written for kids. So you can see like the rating level that they have, um, uh, really, you know, targeting a lot of like uh, lower high school, middle school is, is probably where they're, they're going. But, uh, but again, like they can click and get into some nice little articles there. 
I also wanted to highlight uh, Google um, uh, Science Journal. Now, one caution about this, so if you're starting to think about labs and interactives, is that it is a mobile device, so it's iOS and Android. Um, but uh, as I scroll through, um, what I wanted you to see is that um, you can browse their experiments. And so it might at least give you ideas on things that you can do. And it's a nice way to be able to use phones to, to conduct experiments. So when we think about science, you know, like in a, in a phone, phones have accelerometers in it. So you can actually do experiments with that. They also have microphones. So you can, um, you can do a lot of experiments there uh, with that type of work. So I, I think that this, this part will be really helpful for you as you go through and um, think about it. So even if you are not going to have your students work through the, um, use the tool, the experiments might give you some ideas on things that you can do with your students. And then um, I also, I saw we had a number of, of chemistry teachers on here. Uh, so I definitely wanted to talk about uh, collisions with you guys. And so, um, let me, let me pull up collisions here real quick. Um, collisions are uh, a way to get students engaged in chemistry. You can see the different games that they have here. And so you can most likely find, you know, I think we're getting close to that time of year where acids and bases would be uh, one of those topics. And so um, they have games that can be played here online. Um, and so, um, this is perfect for being able to use with middle school and high school students uh, who are learning chemistry. So, so those are the labs and interactives. And, um, and now if we move to the next piece, I'm gonna talk a little bit about multimedia. And uh, for multimedia, <laughs> there are a lot of choices that you can go through um, in order to be able to um, uh, find uh, different elements. So uh, I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to start with Discovery Ed. So for Discovery Ed, some of you may already be um, in a school where you subscribe to D Discovery Ed, um, and if you are, then you you have access to all of this material. And Nicole Bond is our uh, Discovery Ed expert. And so if you go back to that second page where it has all the lists, if you have specific Discovery Ed questions, please address them to Nicole. She's fantastic, and she'll get back to you and help you uh, get set up. If you're at a school that is not a Discovery Ed school, then you might want to have your administrator sign up for free access during the pandemic um, where you can get access to science. And when you click in here, you know, we, we often think um, uh, that it just has uh, videos, but there's a lot more that's in here um, as you think about and go through. And so if you're doing like Earth and space science, um, you can you can start to find um, videos and, and segments there, but you are also going to find um, additional news information that you can use. So uh, Discovery Ed can be a great place to get the videos that you need. You'll also notice that it's broken down by um, by grade level. So again, if you're working with the littles and you want to have some videos that you want them to, to see, uh, you can get this type of information. You can also embed these into the work that you're doing. Another, another one that you can use uh, for multimedia is BrainPop. Uh, BrainPop has, uh, first of all, it's, to me it's sort of middle school, maybe elementary school. Um, they have the robot that works there, but again, um, they have lots of topics uh, that you can look at. And so when I start to think about like matter and chemistry, I can go in and then again, like tons of articles. So if we're studying the periodic uh, table, um, they have like a little video you can see, four minutes and 41 seconds. Um, and then they have activities that go with it, including quizzes and all kinds of activities, games that go with this. So, um, so this can be a great place uh, for you to sort of work. They have the transcript, which will help you with closed captioning. It will um, give you lesson ideas and standards. BrainPop is a pay for um, uh, program, but you can get a free account. Uh, it just takes just a few moments for you to get an account. Uh, in fact, I was able to sign up, I think, in less than two minutes uh, all together and then get started in there. So, so BrainPop is a great place for you to go and get that type of content. Um, I'm going to jump over to, um, to NASA, especially 
especially if you're doing your science, but even if you're not, you might be able to find, um, when you think about topics, like they have tons of resources. And NASA has things all over the place. And one of the things you should think about is, you know, NASA has, um, you know, they have the Johnson Space Center, and then they have Goddard, and they have JPL, and all these places. This site where I linked is called NASA Wavelengths. You can see it has a little wavelength up here at the top. And this is their master site to be able to search for all NASA resources. So NASA has a great, a great um, uh, amount of content for teachers uh, to be looking for lesson plans and things like that. And then you can just type in here into that search box and take a look at for what you're looking for. Um, if I jump back over here, uh, you'll see I also mentioned um, uh, the Science Bank. The Science Bank has um, has online dissections, and you know, you can Google online dissection as well. So if you're in a class where you might be doing some dissections, then you want to think about how am I going to get my students to do that? And there are some online ones. I think Flynn just had theirs go free. There are a number of those types of things. And then Newzella, now Newzella is having some issues this morning. So if you try that, you might get a 502 error um, I'm going to go back and see if I can reload the page up oh, and they're back up. Okay, so Newzella um, uh, is, has, you know, we usually think about Newzella as ELA content, right? So it's, uh, uh, you know, of course, um, news and then ELA. But when you go under content, um, you can see who their content partners are and they, who they work with. And, um, and, I went to Newzella Science uh, under the solutions, and it gives you extraordinary reading material, and it will levelize this, so it'll allow you to adjust the same article to different Lexile levels. So if you're using this with elementary students who might be at various reading levels, this can be a great <coughs> source for you to, to work with and, um, and be able to, to get things. So you can see, like, published at five reading levels. So all of their articles are there. Now, they're also aligned to the NGSS, and so, um, so that, that may be one of those things you'll want to do. And you want to create an account here as well for yourself. So that's the multi those are the places you can go for multimedia. <clears throat> and then I wanted to finish up uh, by talking about lessons. And so there are a lot of places where you can go get um, quality lessons uh, to help you with your uh, with your teaching. So I'm going to start with uh, Nearpod. So you can create a free account for Nearpod right now. Again, through, during the pandemic, it's free. And if you're like, okay, I want to be able to deliver something, go to the Nearpod lesson library and click on the lesson library. And again, you'll see that you can sort by grade level. So it has stuff for the littles as well as the bigs. Okay. And I'm going to go over to the top science lessons. <clears throat> and when I go in here, you can see they have all kinds of lessons for each of the grade levels. And, um, and so I may choose uh, physical science and I'll say I'm doing, uh, well, I'll do high school. And then when I have some of these lessons, I'm like, here's a change in matter lesson. Um, if I click on this, one of the nice things about this is that once I've added it to my library, so I can click add to my library. And I'm going to go over to my library and take a look at it. Once I do that, I can hit live lesson, so I can use this as a slide deck with my, with my students, or I can have them pace it themselves. And so if I'm previewing it, you can see it has the teacher materials, it has the essential questions, and you'll notice 34 slides with interactivity in, built into it. And so I'm going quickly through the slide deck to get to a place where you can have students, again, um, share their thoughts and you'll notice where it has the post button so the students will be able to answer in here and then give you feedback on it. So, so Nearpod can be a great tool uh, for, for working that way. Khan Academy, they have all kinds of lessons. It's more towards um, high school students. But again, if you're like trying to figure out, okay, I'm, uh, you know, I think if I were trying to um, figure out how am I going to move my lessons online, I might start with some Khan Academy lessons, allow them to do some of the teaching as you build up those pieces that are further down the line. So they have lots of, um, uh, lots of different videos. And again, it's chunked out very nicely for you. So you're going to find lots of different things and it has some practice worksheets built in. So it allows students to work through that. 
Um, if you're in the middle school level, Mosa Mac is, um, is another area that has a lot of content and lessons. And so you can start to think about, okay, where am I, I wanna work with uh, students? So if I'm doing something like on the, the water cycle, um, again, you can now get a free trial on Mosa Mac and it walks you through um, some different types of uh, lessons. So I, you know, I do like it. it has design thinking and it has um, the CER claim evidence reasoning um, uh, pieces that are a part of that. And then you can go through and, and start to work through uh, a particular lesson. And you'll see that in this case for the water cycle, they actually have three lessons there. So solve, make, and engineer. And that's sort of the format of those types of lessons. So um, I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna show you one more here. Uh, maybe two more. Uh, I'll jump over to um, PBS Learning. Um, PBS Learning has lots of materials. Again, this is probably more ideal for middle school um, students, and um, but you'll see that they have um, the grade levels listed. So they have stuff for the littles and they have stuff for the older students. And a lot of times they have videos that play in there. But the nice thing about this is that it will share right to your Google Classroom, or you can assign or share from here. So you can you can link that out. And then the last one, if you're looking for lessons, is um, Define Learning. It used to be called Define STEM. And um, they have uh, activities, and again, K to 12. And when I go into science, then I can choose um, the area that I want, and I can choose the grade band that I want, and then find projects. And so these are uh, project-based learning activities um, that students can work through. So you can see they have performance tasks. Uh, for them. So being an aircraft designer and um, sort of matching up with the types of things that they're doing. And so this can be a really robust resource for you. Um, you know, crime scene investigator and uh, culinary artist. And so there are a lot of things that you can use within Define STEM. So, so with that, I'd like you to start thinking about um, any questions you might have. You can populate them into either the chat or into the Q&A. And in this particular sense, um, I did something a little bit different than what we did last week. So, so I wanna remind you of that as we wrap things up. So last week, what we were doing is we were really focused on um, tools. And, and when we focused on those tools, um, we said less is more. That the idea is that you should um, think about um, using just a few tools. So maybe you use Padlet and Flipgrid or use Google Classroom or you use Zoom, but just a couple of tools, trying not to make the list of tools be out there. In this case, we're, we're really saying, you know, you should think about the wide variety of, of content resources, because if you wanna keep things fresh for students, we're recommending that you, you consider, okay, maybe I'm gonna use BrainPop here, but then next time, maybe I'm gonna use PBS Learning, because that variety can be really helpful for you as you go along. and so. What we really tried to do is to give you a chance to see um, the different types of resources that are out there. I'm gonna point you back again to our long list of resources because if you, you're like, well, they didn't even cover what I was looking for, it probably is covered in that list. Um, that is again on our website and if you go to for educators and you go to online content resources, that'll get you to this page and then just click on the drop down for science. So with that, um, with that, what I'll tell you is a reminder that um, the Learn On website is is there for you. Um, as you go through, you'll see right in here is our calendar. So if I quickly flip over there and I go back to home, you'll see the calendar is is up here today. We have office hours going on. Uh, so right now there was an office hours on supporting math. The next set of office hours comes up on secondary transition, so getting students to be able to use public transportation. And our next uh, webinar is on vocabulary parent facilitation, and you'll see a bunch of other things that are listed in here for uh, the next couple days. So uh, please take the time to fill out um, our evaluation. We're really looking for a lot of information, especially as we think about what we're going to be doing um, next um, next week. We haven't announced our schedule. We're working on it uh, as, I, as I talk now. 
um, we're, we're actively uh, looking at what we're going to do there. So please um, help us out by filling out the evaluation. Uh, if you're looking for your Act 48 credit, you can click on that link. You'll be taken to a page that looks like this. If you hit continue, it'll move you out to the forum where you can submit your work. I didn't see any questions. Um, so with that, I'm going to thank you guys for your participation here today. Hopefully you got some good resources that you can use for your content pieces. Um, uh, you know, even though I said there's a whole bunch of content out there, if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, that's okay. What I would suggest is start with one thing. Just start with one. So, you know, as I went through all those pieces, if you figure, if you, if you looked and you said, you know, that might be the most intriguing, um, you may want to, um, you may want to uh, try to uh, take a look and say, I'm going to try that one piece. Um, got a message that the links don't appear to be links, but when I click on them in the chat, they do seem to be taking me out to the right place. As you can see, I clicked in the chat and it brought me up to the, to the webinar evaluation. Um, but you can also get to them via the slide deck. So before I quit out, I'm gonna copy and put the slide deck back in. And on the last slide, that's where you'll find the information um, for getting to the evaluation and to the uh, Act 48 credit. So thank you guys very much for your participation. And I hope you guys have a great week and good luck to you with your work with your students.